So my concern is why didn't their consultants prepare them? Because that's what you should do. If you're going to send somebody for this scan, you should say to them what to expect. I think it's good practice. Have you ever worried about going for a scan? whether it's an abdominal scan or a vaginal scan, and it's actually stopped you from, even though you know it's important, but it stopped you from actually going. You're so scared of the process or the procedure. Have you experienced that? What's it been like? And how did you overcome it? I'd love to know because today's episode of Responding relates just to that question. Hi everyone, welcome back. I'm Dr. Sylvia, a consultant in general practice. Welcome to another episode of Responding where I either tackle one of your questions posted on a previous video of mine or talk about something that's really interesting or unusual in the healthcare space. So today it's one of those times that I'm addressing a question that was posted on the comment section of one of my videos. So let me put that on the screen for you to read along as I look at it as well. So the question is, I have been in a state of confusion. Recently I noticed changes in my period so I went to the hospital and was diagnosed with fibroids. They said it's still very little and there were just a few of them. I complained of heavy bleeding. My consultant asked that I go for a TVS, that's a transvaginal scan, which I am not mentally prepared for. I told them my concerns since I am not sexually active and they said that this was the only way to know the position of the fibroid and the cause of the bleeding. When I went to the scanning center, I couldn't go ahead. I have not been able to go back to my consultant because they asked for me to attend this scan. I'm really worried and I don't know what to do. I am so scared. So I don't know if you've ever been in this kind of situation before. I don't know if you've had this experience before, but believe me, um, this is something that quite a few women do go through. And I'm really sorry that somebody has to experience this. But let's address some of the issues here. Let's just break it down a little bit. So first of all, um, they've noticed a change in their symptoms, which led them to going to the um, hospital or the clinic or wherever to get an assessment, which is great. And the assessment probably included a physical examination. And I believe a scan has already been done, an abdominal scan. A transabdominal scan is that type of scan where the probe or the device is placed on the surface of the abdomen. So usually um, for all of us or those of us who've had scans of the abdomen, the sonographer will apply some gel to the probe and then run it lightly or maybe with a bit of pressure over your abdomen, over your, the, the top of your tummy or the pelvis um, to carry out the scan. We're talking about ultrasound scans, which are a very safe form of visualizing the internal organs. And a scan is essentially using high frequency sound waves that help to take a picture of organs. And they're really very useful, so very important and helpful in making diagnosis or telling us information about different parts of the body and what's going on. So the abdominal scan is important, um, but it has its limitations. And first of all, I think it's important to understand why you would need to have a transvaginal scan. And we're going to look into that in detail. So she's been to the hospital, she's had an assessment and she's been told that she's got fibroids and there are a few of them, but the consultant asked for a transvaginal scan. So the question we need to ask ourselves is why a transvaginal scan? So she was told, according to what she's written, that it was the only way the position of the fibroids could be detected and as well find out what's causing the bleeding so an abdominal scan is not enough for that purpose and i do agree with that a transvaginal scan is better able to tell us what's going on within the pelvis compared to the abdominal scan so let's look at what you can do or what doctors or specialists can do with a transvaginal scan so the transvaginal scan as the name implies is when the scan is conducted through the vagina and it involves inserting the probe or it's also called the transducer through the vagina. Now that's important because it allows you to see very closely in quite good detail if you like a close-up of the organs immediately around the vagina. So that will tell you tell you a lot about the vagina itself, tells you about the cervix, it will tell you about the ovaries and the tubes and the rest of the womb, it can tell you what's inside the womb. So that is why very early pregnancy the transvaginal scan is actually better than an abdominal scan to actually see what's going on and it does not harm the pregnancy because probe that transducer does not enter the womb it does not go beyond it cannot go beyond the cervix okay why do i say so so the size of the transducer is slightly bigger than a tampon let me see if i can open this up and let us look at the size <laughs> promise i'm not putting it anywhere so <laughs> we're good so we're looking at a tampon okay and the size in terms of the width is a little bit bigger than a tampon so for somebody who's not had for somebody who's not sexually active and somebody who's probably not familiar with their internal organs which is a lot of people especially if you're not in the medical field 
um, the idea of having this probe going into your into your body through the vagina can be quite distressing, and uh, especially. If, if the individual, I'm not saying this for this particular person, if it's somebody who might have had an unpleasant experience in the past um, in terms of sexual assault, it also might be very uncomfortable. But we're having a conversation about the transvaginal scan. It is The probe itself is slightly bigger than this, so it's not huge actually. Okay, it's not huge. The second thing is how far is it going to go into the vagina? It goes only a depth of about five to eight centimeters. So that will probably be, so that will probably be, yeah. So I think I have something that is probably five to eight centimeters. So it's not going to go in too far. Um, so I think my finger is about five centimeter. So it's probably going to go in this depth into the vagina five to eight centimeters so that's not very far and it's not going to go into the womb it can't <laughs> the probe cannot pass through the os that is the opening the cervical os that is the opening um into the womb the first part of the womb that probe cannot go in there it can be used for women in very very early pregnancy for example when we're trying to um, look at causes of early pregnancy bleeding you're trying to exclude something like a miscarriage for example you want to know if there is a baby within the womb you want to know if the heart the heart is beating usually it's a transvaginal scan that you're going to have at that very early stage so within the first six seven weeks okay so it's not going to go beyond the particular length it's not going to go beyond the cervix and it is um slightly slightly larger in terms of the width in terms of the width is slightly larger than a tampon the other thing to remember as well is that the vagina itself the, the vagina itself is a muscular tube like a channel or canal that can expand because it's a muscle so it can stretch and it can certainly stretch to accommodate the transducer or that probe and if you think about it when women are having babies vaginally the vagina can stretch to allow a baby to come through so it's really important to have that background about the transvaginal scan and the probe or the transducer that's going to be inserted into the vagina so the transvaginal ultrasound can help us to check the shape and the position and size of the ovaries and the womb it can help us look at the thickness and the length of the cervix it can tell us how blood is flowing through the organs like through the pelvis tell us about the bladder any changes to the bladder it can tell us if there's any fluid um around the ovaries or within the pelvis and that's important for somebody for example if they have pelvic inflammatory disease or pid if there's an infection like that it can even help to tell us whether the uh, lining of the womb is thicker or thinner it can give us really important bits of information it can help us to identify conditions like fibroids there might be some fibroids that you cannot identify using an abdominal a transabdominal scan and you may not be able to determine how the fibroid is positioned which is really important especially when you want to look at its potential impact and when you're thinking about treatment. So the transvaginal scan is important for so many different reasons. Um, it's used if a woman complains about pelvic pain, if she's experiencing um, abnormal vaginal bleeding for whatever cause, you'd want to do a transvaginal scan to have a look and work out what's going on. If there's an ovarian cyst, I've talked about looking at the ovary, so that's included, experiencing postmenopausal bleeding, so different reasons why the transvaginal scan is important. And so let me talk a little bit about how it's done. So usually um, the sonographer, you know, checks your details and um, positions you. So usually it's performed with the patient lying on their back. You'd have your bottom clothing or the lower clothing taking off so that includes your underwear and usually you'll be covered with a you know a drape for you know just to keep you comfortable there would usually be a chaperone in the room so you can request for one or you can come with somebody if you feel comfortable coming with somebody else you know come with a friend or partner or someone if you feel that you need somebody to support you through the process if you don't often there is a chaperone so it's usually conducted with either another clinical member of staff present um in the room and they might be assisting the sonographer but they may also just be with you and you know being there to support you the sonographer takes hold of the probe or the transducer it's usually covered with a sheath and then some lubricant gel is applied before it is gently inserted into the vagina all the while you're being told what's happening it's not just going to be it's not just going to be shoved into you it's a gentle process and so the question to ask is is it painful if it's done by a careful and experienced sonographer it's not painful it can be uncomfortable for the moments while the probe is within the vagina so it can be uncomfortable but it's not unbearable so it's not you're not going to be excruciating pain and you're not going to be it's not something that you're going to be in agony as a result 
it can be a bit uncomfortable and here's the reason why first of all most adult female vaginas will be able to tolerate that size of probe remember we talked about it being slightly bigger than a tampon but when it's inserted it's not just going to stay in one position remember i've talked about all the different organs that the, the transvaginal scan could reveal to us and so what the sonographer will do is as they insert it they might move it around gently because they're trying to locate those organs they're trying to look at the ovaries they're trying to look at the womb and it's lining they're trying to look at the bladder they're trying to see if there's any fluid within the pelvis around or behind the um, ovaries they're trying to look at the cervix they're trying to look into the womb so depending on what reason you're, you're having the scan but they would generally do some standard things and so that might need them to move the probe around so that might cause some pressure and it might make the experience a bit uncomfortable as they're doing so but it shouldn't be painful um, to the point that you're you cannot tolerate it so for most women they should experience just a little discomfort okay so now that we've described what happens why it happens let's go specifically to some of the questions so this individual is worried about having this procedure they're not sexually active and they are not mentally ready and so my concern is why didn't their consultants prepare them because that's what you should do if you're going to send somebody for this scan you should say to them what to expect i think it's good practice for you as a clinician to say to your patient i'm sending you for a transvaginal scan here is why we need to have this done here is what happens when you have the transvaginal scan especially if they've not had it before and if they told you that they are not sexually active and so they don't have the experience of something being placed into the vagina to know how what might happen because this is an opportunity for you to reassure them and say hey this is going to be maybe 15 to 20 minutes long the sonographer is going to insert this gently into the vagina and it's not going to be painful it might be a bit uncomfortable and sort of go through some of the things that i've said here so i think a lot of this anxiety cold and should have been allayed by the person that was sending them for the scan so that gives them the opportunity to prepare mentally because she said now she says i'm not mentally pre prepared for that mental preparation could have actually started with the uh, consultant who did the referral and then she can go off and read up about it and think about it and everything when she comes for the appointment the next step will be if she's really worried about this come with a chaperone or say to the sonographer can i have a chaperone and they would usually arrange that if you think that they may not then come with somebody the other thing that you can do is if you still have any hang-ups about it even after we've explained to you that physically this thing is on this process is unlikely to cause you significant pain you can take some pain medicine a couple of paracetamol tablets before you go just so that you don't feel too uncomfortable it is very rare that they need to use an, an, an anesthetic or um, even a local anesthetic or anything like that during a transvaginal scan um, and i think that if you explain to the sonographer that it's your first time most people will be understanding and take you through the process and you know explain what they're doing support you as they go along i think the other thing that would have really provided some support with this is explaining why you're having the scan and th they mentioned it you know they wanted to understand the position and the cause of the bleeding but i think to a greater extent for example saying that yes they, we, there are a number of fibroids in there but there are different types of fibroids in terms of the position of the of the fibroids now we know the womb has three layers there is the inner lining which is that surrounds the space where the baby is that's the endometrium there is the middle layer which is the muscle of the womb and that's the myometrium and then there's a top layer of the womb so the fibroids can be located um, within the muscle because fibroids are benign growths of the muscle so they can be located right within the muscle or from the muscle they're pushing into the inner lining or from the muscle they're pushing in the opposite direction outward and going out into the pelvic cavity so a doctor will need to know what type of fibroid they're dealing with when they're thinking about treatment they want to know where is this fibroid located is it a subserosal fibroid which is the type that's growing from the muscle pushing outwards into the rest of the abdomen or pelvis or is it an intramural fibroid which is stuff growing within right within the muscle layer or is it a submucosal fibroid which is the one that's growing into the inner lining of the womb and that's important that tells you a lot of information because they can present different types of symptoms they can be you know when you're looking at treatment you can decide those that you can remove easily via myomectomy or those that might be more tricky and so on so they can provide knowing their position and their location can provide a lot of useful information and i think if it was explained probably in more detail perhaps all this anxiety would also have been allayed my recommendation to somebody who's feeling this way is ask the consultant why do you want this procedure can they explain in a bit more detail can they ask them is it possible if you're really feeling queasy about it um, is it possible for this to be done with a transabdominal scan alone i don't think so 
Um, but if the consultant insists on a transvaginal scan, what's the process? Is it painful? You know, have that conversation with them and hopefully you should get that reassurance with the information I've just provided that it shouldn't be painful. It can be a bit uncomfortable because of what, uh, of how the probe is being moved. It's not a long procedure. It doesn't have any complications afterwards. You're not going to bleed, especially if it's performed by somebody who is an expert at what they're doing. You're not going to have bleeding or severe pain afterwards. You shouldn't. And once you've done, once you've had the scan done, then you have the report and your consultant can go ahead and have a discussion with you about your treatment options and you can decide which way you want to go so i hope this has been useful i know it was a bit was it a bit scattered maybe a little bit but it's all about responding to your questions and i don't like sort of scripting things i just want to have a chat around it let me know what you think if you have any questions please use our email health information service or drop them in the comments and i'll use i'll respond doing a video like this and if you want to learn more about fibroids treatment options and so on please take a look at my fibroids playlist and i'll place the link for you in the description box as well thank you so much for listening i hope that was useful and i'll see you again soon